What is up guys? Uh, this is Miguel aka Miguelica. Gonna go ahead and introduce another deck profile. Once again, it's going to be Monarchs, but this time it's going to be the 2022 20, February ban list. So Pantheism at back at three, Stormforth back at three. I know that's been since like last year already, but uh, went ahead and updated it i know my last list i didn't have that included but i'm going ahead and introduce gonna introduce that today so let's go ahead and start off we've got three erebus before i uh go deeper into this i just want to let you all know this is more revolved around dark monsters the dark monarchs and uh i'm gonna go ahead and show you how i basically revolved around that so three Erebus uh best monarch card in my opinion best level eight so uh uh you always want to have your Erebus uh can pitch your other three monarch uh, spell and traps so Erebus pretty good the troll card majesty sphinx well not exactly a troll card uh, i like really love the fact that it meets the 2400 1000 defenses and it is pretty good like it's this is probably like my favorite card within the monarch decks you lock your opponent sometimes your opponent will scoop because this card comes out a lot of them want to play dogmatica or sky striker and you know they just want to summon activate an effect and this will lock your opponent down to where we also have triple vanity fiend now i've always loved vanity fiend i've always utilized him as a side card However, the one the one downside to this is that the fact that he's 1200 defense, uh, so you can't really add him to your hand. You can't uh, u utilize tenacity with, with him. So, But he is pretty good as far as uh, being a tribute summon monster and being able to utilize other cards around him that require having a tribute summon monster. So Vanity Sphinx is pretty good. We got the one Caius, my last... Uh, Monarch monster with uh, 2400 attack and 1000 defense um, I Utilized them back when I ran Treeborn The Treeborn Monarchs and Kai's was always my favorite card the fact that you know target banish 1000 if it's a, a dark monster or if you have your opponent to less than a thousand you can target himself and you can just you can just win the duel like that That brings us to our level twos so we got triple idols yeah you definitely want to have three of them in your deck uh normal summon and you can summon one of your monarchs uh, i guess the uh, and then also if you banish them from the graveyard you can special summon your other squire which is going to be uh double idea idea and now i've procrastinated on if i wanted to run three of them but i've I don't know as for some reason i would always end up bricking with three but i found it really essential just to have two in the deck and it's been pretty useful uh, just running running uh this guy at two and then summoning summoning the idols and you'll be able to bring out your Erebus. so it is good at two i i honestly believe that wraps it up for the monsters. Let's go ahead and start with our spells. We have a uh, triple storm fourth. The fact that it's back at three makes monarchs uh, relevant again. Can, or if your opponent's running Herald of Perfection or any kind of archetype that has a one negation per turn, you can bluff them out, play the storm fourth, force them to activate it. Even if you don't have the monarch in your hand, you know, it kind of fakes them out. So that's what I utilize Stormforth a lot for. Triple Domain. Now, the key element that I, I really love Domain for is not because of the, the fact that you can lower the level 8. Of course, that does work for Erebus pretty well. But I love the fact that it denies your opponent from summoning from extra deck. A lot of... Decks nowadays revolve around the extra deck, so I mean you can summon Majesty's Fiend or Caius, and you can still have a pretty strong board. Or even with your Erebus, you open up with the Erebus and this, and it's you pretty much have a strong play already. And 
one Return of the Monarchs, uh, pretty good at, you know, just if you just want to keep adding Monarchs to your hand, but I only need to run one of them. Uh, the fact that I'm not running the other level eight light Monarch, but uh, having it at one's pretty good. One Frost Blast of the Monarchs. Now, I know this card isn't as use useful as Twin Twister or Cosmic, but the fact that it has Monarch in its name, you can utilize it as material for, uh, as tossing material for Pantheism. So that's why I like um, Frost Black. And it destroys any set card. It's not just the set spells or traps, but opponent sets a uh, monster, you can pop that as well. One March of the Monarchs, utilizing Tenacity to bring this card out. You want to bring out your Majesties or Vanity's Fiend. Your opponent wants to Regeki. It's going to be a challenge, and this is going to be really useful with Regeki back at three. So one Mar March of the Monarchs is uh, good for the deck. And the Triple Tenacity. Three Tenacity. You can utilize the Majesty's Fiend. You can utilize Erebus, and you can utilize Caius. Not Vanity's Fiend, the fact that his defense is 1,200, which, I don't know, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just annoying the fact that his defense is 1,200 sometimes. And triple Pantheism, so Pantheism, the fact that it's back at 3 makes the deck really fast again. You can pitch, use Pantheism, pitch a, a Monarch, then get the search effect. And then possibly get another Pantheism to your hand. Or you can get Tenacity to your hand to get another Pantheism. So it's like you can... I mean, if you have that Monarch in your hand, you can get that power play of just playing two Pantheisms in, in one turn. That's it for our spells. Uh, monarch spells. So we got, our, we got our trap cards. We got Monarchs Erupt. Very good. I know a lot of Monarchs players don't run this card. But I found it really useful, the fact that you can summon a monarch your opponent could uh impermanence you or whether you have vanity's fiend or majesty's fiend negate your effect but you can you know you can throw this on them if they try to start a combo play on you and you, you, it'll completely shut them down so i think this is actually a really good card a really good trap card to to utilize with your monarchs and we got our triple prime monarch uh very good with um with pantheism allows you to special summon also from the graveyard has a good field effect to let you draw one card if you shove full two monarchs from the graveyard and back into the deck so prime at three is pretty good as well and we've got foolish burial goods now something about this card is that when monarchs first got hit this card wasn't around but the fact that that pantheism and stormforth are back at three this card can be used to dump a pantheism and actually use it on your first turn. So I think this is a really good card. You could dump pantheism, you can dump prime, and you know you can actually pull off a play on your first turn just to avoid bricking. This, I believe, this is the one card that'll actually save you from bricking. And as we go for our staples, we got Allure, we got Called by the Grave, we got Harpy's Feather Duster, we got Foolish Burial, and we got Dark Ruler No More. Now I, I can say I can say Foolish Burial Goods is a staple as well, but Foolish Burial, you want to use it to top, toss the Edia to the graveyard, get the Banished Pantheism back to your hand, and to be able to use it again. Dark Ruler No More, your opponent goes first. Well, if your opponent goes first, you, your turn. And you can utilize the Dark Ruler no more. You can stop other monsters. And you can uh, do your play, get your Monarch out. And you can possibly lock your opponent. The Feather Duster. Opponent sets back row. We all know the story. Back row, Feather Duster. Called by the Grave. Ash Blossom. Uh, yeah, pretty much Ash Blossom. If you know your opponent's going to have it in the deck, this card's gonna, this card's gonna, will do the job for you. And we got Allure of Darkness. We got the triple level 2 monster. We got the, the one Caius. We got the triple Ma uh, Vanity's Fiend. And we got the triple Erebus. So that this is really good at speeding up your deck. Just in case you 
uh, don't want to brick to avoid the bricking. So lure darkness is pretty good in this situation. So I didn't prepare a side, and there is no extra deck for this deck, but um, I did consider a solemn judgment also just in case uh, you know Raigeki back at three, but. For now, th this is what's been doing it for me, getting me to Platinum on Master Duel. Been testing it out a lot online, but um, I'll go ahead and keep you all updated. But for now, thanks for watching, uh, aka Megalaga, and I will see you all later.